Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In today's video I'm gonna take a look at this Commodore WIC 20 and uh, see if we can make uh, the video quality any better. So I had this uh, Commodore WIC 20 uh, for a while and uh, while the video output is fairly good I am sure there is uh, some possibilities for improvement. So this machine is working uh, greatly. I have had a restoration video about it uh, some time back so you can take a look at that if you want. The WIC 20 doesn't have a built-in RF modulator. It uh, only has a composite video out via this um, video output here, uh, almost the same as the Commodore 64. However, it still has a RF <laughs> kind of a modulator box inside that produces uh, the composite video output. And uh, yeah, if we take a closer look at the screen now, we can see that uh, yeah, while it's fairly okay, there are uh, some problems here. I've zoomed in and uh, as you can see, at least with some of the colors, the text gets very choppy or blurred. Uh, seems like uh, some pixels are missing or not shown properly. And if you take a look at this uh, GORF game, you can see the same effect here. There's some artifacts on the edge here and uh, all those uh, vertical jail bars going up and down with some colors. You can see it on the side here. And you can see that the text gets very blurred in some combinations of colors, almost uh, unreadable. So what I'm going to do in this video, uh, which might be quite short, I guess, is uh, to try out this WIC20 clear video uh, solution here. And this is a little device that you place under the WIC chip inside the machine and uh, you connect some uh, wires on uh, different places. And this will completely replace the built-in video circuitry and uh, should provide a much uh, better image. So it will be interesting to see if that's uh, the case. So I found this on Etsy.com. Uh, it's uh, a seller called uh, Jstonian Retro Shop and I paid like 36 euros or dollars for it, excluding shipping. And it looks uh, to be a nice little device. It has a little chip. I haven't uh, studied uh, the circuitry here and found out what it really does, but uh, I'm just gonna place it in the machine and test and see if it's any good and it came with a extra little uh, capacitor uh, probably uh, needed uh, some place in the machine where you connect this and of course you place this where the wick chip uh, sits originally and then you place the wick chip in this socket all right let's open up this machine and figure out how to insert that little uh, module All right, here's uh, the motherboard and it says here, I cleaned it and recapped it in 2021. The thing we're gonna modify is inside this box. And here's the WIC chip and the circuitry for generating um, the composite video. I said it had like a RF modulator box. This is what I meant, not an RF modulator, obviously. So immediately I see a little uh, issue here. <laughs> I was hoping that the MOS WIC chip was in a socket, but it isn't. So then I need to desolder it. Hopefully that will work out. I took out the board and uh, now let's see if we can remove the wick chip without any damage. <laughs> these old chips soldered onto these old boards can be a pain to uh, desolder. 
However, I'm gonna use the desoldering station and be very careful uh, not to damage any of the traces. I have had a few mishaps before while removing chips and um, <laughs> that was because I didn't take enough care and this time I'm gonna use all the tricks I know about to be able to remove this chip as careful as possible. I see many that use that um, low melt solder to uh, desolder stuff and I have actually ordered that so but in the meantime I'm gonna use uh, some flux first this liquid flux and then I'm gonna use some regular leaded uh, solder first on uh, the solder points because that's gonna help with uh, removing the chip no while I like to uh, improve on these old machines by using uh, modern solutions. I really don't like to damage them, so uh, that's why I need to be extra careful. I'm gonna use this uh, NST Set D915 uh, desoldering station. It has been good, however, lately it actually has uh, not been that good. I have cleaned it very well. I I have uh, replaced uh, the tip uh, with at least two different kinds, but uh, yeah, not that good anymore. I'm not really sure why. Know whether to use a lot of flux or not when you desolder uh, with the desoldering station, sucking it up. Uh, I'm not really sure what's best, so this time I'm gonna try both. I'm gonna use a little bit of flux and see if that helps on these pins. Then there's the matter of uh, how much heat are you gonna use. I mean, too little heat won't melt um, the solder through the through hole. Uh, <laughs> too much heat can uh, damage the pads and uh, they dislodge from the PCB. So I'm gonna use 380 degrees Celsius now. Yeah, that seems to work. Uh, the chip has very short uh, pins. Uh, I guess they have been cut after soldering. Yeah, looks all right. Problem is uh, the pin are still stuck to the side of um, the true hole and uh, yeah, doesn't come out easily. And when the pins are that short, it's hard to um, get good heat on them. Yeah, that went fairly okay, but uh, still uh, some uh, solder in the holes. I'm gonna use uh, more flux and uh, then I'm gonna use a solder wick to see if I can remove some more. Yeah, that drags away a lot more of solder. Then I use a flat screwdriver just to try and push the pins loose from the true hole. Some of them actually do, but not all. Then I'm gonna push the pins from this side as well, just to wiggle them loose. You can see that the solder wick dragged away a lot of solder from the other side. Just gonna try and use it a little bit on this side because I can see some uh, solder up uh, on the pins on this side. Yeah, and I felt it came loose there. Yeah, a little bit of solder uh, already. Yeah, still sucks up a lot of uh, remaining solder. And doing this, I can feel which pin is uh, loose or not. Now it feels like uh, most of the pins are loose. Oh yeah, completely loose on that side, other side, uh, not all. So I need to work a little bit more on uh, this side. And uh, I'm gonna use the soldering iron and then 
just try to wiggle the pin loose and then push it uh, so that it doesn't stick back to the true hole again. Try to wiggle it loose. However, do not use a lot of force because you can damage um, both the true holes and the pads around. These two are not loose. But now I think they came loose. Yeah, there you go. Chip is free. And no true holes stuck to the pins and uh, no pads lifted. Uh, nice. Now I'm just gonna clean up the area with um, some flux and um, solder wick. There's still a little bit of leftover solder. A little bit of cleaning with alcohol and then we're good to go on this side. Also cleaning on this side, which is uh, more important. <laughs> Alright, now it's time to test um, this device. Does it uh, even fit? Oh, there's a cap there in the way. I just push these resistors and uh, other components a little bit away. Okay, now it's in and uh, now I'm gonna read the instructions on uh, how to proceed with this before I continue. There's still a little bit of solder left on the pins of the chip, so I'm just gonna try and yeah, clean up that. Just drag it away from uh, the end of the pins. Now, this chip has very short legs. I'm uh, <laughs> curious if this in fact will fit <laughs> into the socket. Yeah, it might. We'll see about that. But first I'm gonna solder in uh, this one. Soldering this in should be quite easy. I had a little bit of flux on uh, the pads first. So that was it and the pins uh, is quite longer than uh, the original chip that was there but uh, yeah that's okay they are not that long I mean uh, they're not longer than these for example and oh my god look at that what do I see here there's uh, something that looks like uh, corrosion and that's for uh, the keyboard connector um, okay need to uh, take care of that is that the rust? Looked like rust, but I don't think it was some other brown gunk. <laughs> Came off quite easily. Just gonna spray a little bit of electronic cleaner as well. Let it soak for a while. Next up, we need to connect a couple of wires from uh, the device to some points on the RF uh, module here and uh, yeah the instructions aren't very clear uh, however we see two true holes here one for Luma and uh, that one for uh, Chroma so it's those two uh, that are gonna be wired up and the instruction says to find uh, the correct uh, connections from uh, the DIN connector of the video output and uh, yeah, this uh, is how it looks. Uh, pin 4 and 5 are 
connected together um, chroma and luma pin 3 is audio one is 5 volts and uh, 2 is ground so we need to find where this uh, line here goes to the rf modulator block here and by the way i think i said that this is um, producing a composite uh, video output but um, it is in fact uh, s video uh, as i understand it Taking a look at the schematics of the WIC-20, uh, I think I found the correct uh, revision. It uh, corresponds to what I see on the board. And here's um, pin 4 and 5 on the video port and it goes to this uh, transistor Q2. So uh, we need to cut that and connect um, wire from there to the device, I think. <laughs> need to study this a little bit more careful and if we take a look at this picture on how it is installed we see there's a wire from uh, there goes to where that transistor was so the transistor has been removed and the other wire goes over here and uh, in fact there is no component there from before and taking a look at my Board and um, that means we're gonna remove uh, this um, transistor and uh, yeah, make a little wire from uh, the chroma out to there which goes directly to the DIN connector for the video and the other one the luma signal should go there where on that picture there was a capacitor here seems to be an inductor instead all right, let's dive into it. I'm gonna remove uh, the transistor Q2. You can of course just uh, lift uh, one of the legs of the transistor, but uh, yeah, just gonna remove it. Not gonna cut it, but I'm gonna keep it so that this can be reversed in uh, case it doesn't work. Let's see now the correct pins. Yeah, that came out quite easily. Just to make sure that we are on the correct um, place here. Yeah. So I prepared a small wire here. Let's see if we can uh, solder it in. I pre-tinned the, the ends of uh, the wire. Yeah. A little bit hard to reach down here but uh, that worked then I solder in uh, the wire for uh, the luma signal as you can see I have already inserted uh, the wick chip and it sits quite uh, tightly into there no, I'm not an expert into the video generation circuitry on these machines and uh, the description isn't really clear but since Luma and Chroma are connected together on the DIN connector, I guess since they have two separate wires that you need to cut that connection. So I'm just going to do that. Just like that, and I think those are now not connected. That trace is cut. Let's check. Yeah, no continuity there. Okay, I didn't connect the other end because I think it's gonna go there, but uh, not really sure. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately the description of this uh, device and how to uh, install it is uh, very poor and uh, that's a pity. I guess someone that understands the video generation circuitry on a Commodore machine might easily understand it but uh, I'm not there yet. <laughs> so I hooked up the board let's see if we get any video signal at all first of all. I'm gonna turn it on. No 
no signal and uh, if my assumptions is correct if I connect uh, the Luma to this pin here on the DIN connector we should have a video signal which we don't oh no I just forgot to insert <laughs> the video cable <laughs> so nothing can happen then let's see now do we get some sort of uh, video signal here Uh, is the TV correct? Yeah. Okay, we have a signal, a very poor signal. Uh, however, now both uh, devices are connected to the same pin, so that was not what I expected. But uh, of course, this is meant to be a S video signal, so this is the composite. A video and uh, it actually came with a little capacitor that is meant to make a composite uh, video signal for this all right so I'm really not sure how this is supposed to be wired up if I just uh, bridge the two Luma and Chroma pins on the DIN again and uh, just place the Luma on uh, <laughs> that then I get the signal which I guess is some kind of composite signal since it's both signals combined into one but uh, yeah since this is supposed to produce a S video signal I'm gonna make a little um, cable I have a S video cable here which I'm gonna sacrifice and uh, use because on S video you have separate uh, pins for uh, Luma and Chroma So that's a shielded uh, cable, now I just need to figure out which of these wires uh, goes where. Now that uh, shield is uh, just connected to the metal of uh, the contact, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, however, there's four wires, two for uh, Chroma and two for uh, Luma. I made a little drawing and this is the contact as seen uh, from the front and um, these two pins are the chroma and these two pins are the loma <laughs> and these two pins are the luma and the different colors and so yeah gonna try and hook this up see if we can get the signal from <laughs> this machine so they have a common ground so i just twisted the uh, the two the black and the purple uh, the two grounds together and i'm pushing it into the the ground um, it has a ground connector on the adapter here. So now if I connect the orange to the Luma. Should be fine there. And then the red goes to the chroma and I'm just gonna push it down to the, <laughs> to the wire and see if it works. So I connected the S-Video to a SCART adapter that goes into the TV that has an S-Video input. So now if I <laughs> hold this to ground and uh, the Luma goes to... Yeah, look at that. No, that's okay. I touched the Luma signal to the Chroma and we can see a picture but uh, all wrong colors but it looks very clear. Uh, this is the Luma. Now instead of fiddling around with loose wires I uh, soldered in the ground and uh, Chroma and I have the Luma here and uh, let's see now if I connect those. Okay, <laughs> there's some, some kind of picture. Well, look at that. <laughs> uh, that is a very crisp uh, picture. However, on my TV, uh, everything is black and white, but uh, looking at it now uh, <laughs> on the camera, it actually has the correct colors. So how can that be? <laughs> so I think I just um, uh, swapped the two chroma and luma uh, but this looks promising <laughs> at least the circuit is uh, working and the wick chip is still working 
I adjusted the camera so now you get the, the correct representation of what I see on the screen and as you can see it's only black and white and it seems a little bit uh, unstable if I turn off and on. Uh, sometimes it just flashes with uh, purple color, yeah like that. And to my knowledge I have connected the S-Video cable now uh, correctly so I'm thinking maybe I have reversed the polarity on the chroma signal. Let me try and connect the black wire to the chroma. Oh yes, look at that. That was it. I have reversed it. <laughs> Let me show you. No, that's what I call a pretty perfect uh, picture from a VIC-20. <laughs> Yes, that looks a lot better, don't you think? So I soldered in the wires again. Uh, I used a little shorter wire because now I understand you're supposed to open up. Uh, there's a hole uh, or a, a, a filled up hole there and uh, just lead the wire through that. Okay, so what I misunderstood by looking at the photo I had was I thought this wire was going to be soldered into that solder point on there. Uh, now I opened it up with my desoldering station and uh, you're supposed to have that wire go through that hole. You could of course just let it go over like this but uh, if you want to have that uh, lid on uh, the can you can do that. So this is a thinner wire so it uh, runs through there like this. All right, I think I figured it out. I got a really good S-Video signal um, and I could of course make an S-Video cable uh, with some arrangements to the DIN connector. However, that's not what I really want. I want to use a regular composite and I want a better composite video signal from this. And uh, yeah, a composite video signal goes into uh, pin four and five on uh, the DIN connector here, uh, but it is the combination of the Luma plus sync and the chroma uh, signals. So they go into these uh, two pins, but uh, one is the high uh, part of the signal and one is the low part of the signal. So this is actually correctly um, connected. Now I just bridged uh, that uh, trace that I broke before. That was not correct. So I used this uh, little wire here to bridge them together again. And then we have um, the Luma signal that comes through the hole and goes here. And the, the Chroma signal comes here as it did before. So essentially what we've done now, we have bypassed the whole uh, video circuitry block on the motherboard and have uh, direct uh, Luma Chroma signals to the DIN connector. However, that doesn't work uh, really good. That produces this image and while it is a pretty good color and uh, yeah, the characters on the screen are quite uh, all right it has a lot of distortion so this is not a good picture and uh, to fix that that's where that little capacitor that came uh, <laughs> with the, the device is used and reading the instructions on the seller page it says by request i will include one capacitor to connect luma plus chroma to convert luma into composite. This is a permanent install unless used inside a DIN connector. So I've been thinking uh, hard and long about um, that little piece of information and um, I couldn't really understand how to connect that capacitor. So I tried to um, put the capacitors between uh, the Luma and Chroma signal but yeah there's no difference in the picture but i guess since um, this uh, now has two different uh, parts of the video signal combined into one and this is a capacitor is it is used for filtering out some part of the signal uh, maybe uh, that's the noise we see there as i said i'm not an expert in uh, <laughs> video generation uh, electronics or anything like that and how the video signals are built up but what i'm gonna try now is to place the capacitor between uh, uh, i mean in 
the chroma signal. So I connect the capacitor to uh, the chroma output on the device and then to the wire that goes to the DIN connector. Let's see if that helps. By the way, I also uh, desoldered this uh, resistor here because it is connected to the same trace that the chroma signal goes uh, to the DIN connector. So I wasn't really sure if that was perhaps interfering. Uh, didn't have an effect, so um, I guess I'll just leave it there for now. Uh, so now I'm gonna desolder this uh, chroma wire again. So what I was talking about is to instead solder in um, this capacitor to the chroma output and then to the wire. However, it is uh, it is long enough, so I can just remove the whole uh, green wire here and uh, solder it in there instead. Oops. Okay, that's in there and uh, the other one goes in there where the transistor wants where. It's a little bit hard to get a good view on this on the camera, but I'll try. Yeah, it's in. Maybe <laughs> I could have cut the, the legs a little bit, but this is for uh, just for testing. Let's see now if that improves it. Oh yes, <laughs> look at that. That was it. That is a very nice, um, very clear uh, <laughs> picture. Very nice. So that is uh, now the composite uh, output of this uh, clear video device. Yeah, it looks to be like, uh, yeah, almost as good as the S video signal. All right, that was a little bit back and forth, but as soon as I <laughs> understood what to do, uh, it actually was quite easy. Too bad the instructions uh, wasn't uh, very clear on that uh, seller's page. I actually Googled a bit and couldn't really find any good uh, recipe for doing this mod anywhere, but uh, I guess now I have made one. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna clean up uh, this, make this shorter and um, check the solder joints and everything and uh, then we'll do some comparison. Okay, now that's cleaned up. There's the little uh, capacitor I soldered in and uh, that loose resistor. I just put a little bit of heat shrink over that. Now, since I have uh, these uh, heat sinks on uh, the MOS uh, on the WIC chip, um, the lid doesn't uh, go on completely so I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do um, I think I just take off the heat sinks and um, try and find something uh, lower profile so I was a bit worried that uh, maybe this had affected the audio but um, it hasn't so that still works so it might be a little bit hard to see, but um, there are some uh, bars, some vertical bars uh, with uh, a little bit of uh, bleeding colors. And uh, yeah, there is a potentiometer on this device. I'm gonna try and adjust that and see if it gets any better. So I can't see a big difference. Uh, turn and turn and turn but uh, no change for me at least <laughs> well maybe it got a little bit better I still see some bars but they are no uh, less visible yeah now it's much better so that really helped but then again the text became a little bit more blurry so now I turned it back and you can see that the color bleeds a little bit uh, over and uh, yeah, the vertical lines are much more visible. 
However, the text got a little bit sharper then, so I need to find, if you see the score text here, it's uh, quite sharp now, but if I turn uh, all the way back on the pot meter, um, <laughs> the vertical uh, jail bars disappear more, but um, the text gets a little bit more blurrier, so I just need to find um, a good middle point. Oh, I think I crashed it. I'm not really sure what I did. And then just a little note on uh, what I have done to this machine for later. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Um, the text, it's a lot better than it was, uh, I really think. So I'm gonna take a couple of uh, comparison shots and um, yeah, this is uh, how it was before and uh, this is how it is now. All right, that doesn't look too bad, I think. I think that's a very nice improvement, uh, although it's uh, not perfect, it's not pixel perfect, um, but it's better. And I think this clear video mod was uh, worth it, actually. It's a bit hard to film <laughs> on the screen because uh, it doesn't show exactly the same that I see. You get these distortions from uh, the camera, but uh, I think it looks all right. This is Avenger. Yeah, that text looks really crisp and nice. Yeah, I think uh, the colors and uh, pixels are quite all right. I wouldn't expect anything more than this from an old computer, unless you have some really expensive uh, equipment. Uh, boom. Okay, that was it for this video. I struggled a little bit to uh, understand how this mod actually worked and uh, how to connect it, but uh, eventually I got it right. So. Uh, Hopefully this is uh, valuable to someone else that want to try this and uh, hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something and now I'm just gonna enjoy this uh, week 20 with some uh, improved picture quality and uh, play a couple of games. So thanks for watching and uh, yeah please hit that subscribe and the like buttons if you want to do that uh, that will help me and I uh, just want to say thanks uh, to my patrons. Um, See you, bye bye.